Hey guys, Scott with iFixit here, and today we're going to talk teardowns, specifically all the Apple teardowns we've done recently, starting with the iPhone 8 and iPhone 8 Plus. While the opening procedure was pretty much the same as the procedure in the iPhone 7, the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus had plenty of interesting things for us to find. The iPhone 8 lost some tri-point screws in the display cable bracket, but before we got too excited about Apple removing these pesky screws, we found one down in the Taptic engine bracket, and in both the display bracket and the Taptic engine bracket in the iPhone 8 Plus. The battery adhesive strips have been changed from two full length strips to four shorter tabs, most likely to avoid being overlaid on the wireless charging coil. Speaking of batteries, the batteries in both phones lost a little capacity. The iPhone 8 came in at 6.96 watt hours, down from the 7.45 watt hour battery in the 7, and the 8 Plus had a 10.28 watt hour battery down from the 11.1 watt hour battery in the 7 Plus. However, Apple does claim that battery life should be about the same as the previous generation. The Apple Watch Series 3 didn't have any surprises for us during the opening procedure as it was remarkably similar to the Series 2. Inside the watch, we found a ton of tiny tri-point screws, a battery with a 4% increase in capacity, support for Qi wireless charging, and a whole new section of RF chips, surely responsible for handling the added LTE functionality. Interestingly, after the teardown, we dug into the non-LTE version of the Series 3 and found some changes, including a battery with slightly lower capacity and a Taptic engine with a different style of connector. The non-LTE version had coiled copper connectors that formed copper-to-copper -copper contacts, while the LTE Taptic engine was soldered directly onto the board. We were expecting the new Apple TV 4K to be nothing more than a board in a box, but once we got in, we found a new addition to the Apple TV family, a fan. All that 4K HDR playback must come at a thermal price. We also found an upgraded processor. The Apple TV 4K has the A10X Fusion processor, a big improvement from the A8 found in the fourth generation Apple TV. All of these teardowns generated some questions from you guys and hopefully we've got some answers. First up, what's the reason that necessitated reducing the capacity and the batteries of the iPhone 8? That's a good question. In my opinion, Apple reduced the battery capacity to make room for new internal components, such as the Qi wireless charging coil. Now that being said, Apple says that battery life will be about the same as it was in the previous generation, so performance probably will not be that different. The layout of the iPhone 8 looks pretty much the same as the layout in the iPhone 7. Can you use an iPhone 7 display in the iPhone 8? So we actually did some testing on this and found that the LCD from an iPhone 7 does work on the iPhone 8. However, the digitizer from an iPhone 7 does not work on an iPhone 8, so therefore, it's not a perfect fit. I heard that Apple was suing Qualcomm after they increased royalty fees for using their chips. Does the Apple Watch Series 3 still use Qualcomm chips, or did they switch to Intel? We actually found Qualcomm chips on our iPhone 8, our iPhone 8 Plus, and our Apple Watch Series 3 which does suggest that Apple and Qualcomm are still pretty reliant on each other. And lastly, with everything upside down, down under, how'd you guys keep all the electronics from falling out? Oh, you cheeky mate. Just kidding. It turns out gravity's actually upside down in Australia as well, so we didn't really have much of a problem. We have a ton of teardowns coming up soon, so make sure that you're subscribed to our channel. I'll see you next time.